Yo, what is up? Welcome to Ninja Geek Games. Rob Butler designed one of my favourite zombie survival horror games, Z War 1. The game composed a campaign system where players took on the role of survivors in an apocalyptic world overrun by The Walking Dead. In a complete overhaul, we're now looking at a World War II theme with SES Rogue Regiment, a cooperative one to four player action game of stealth, cunning and daring bravado coming to Kickstarter on the 29th of November. Here, you take on the role of SAS operators, embarking on dangerous missions to destroy supply lines and assassinate officers in a game of veiled movement using an arsenal of weapons and specialised equipment. In these covert missions, stealth and speed is of the essence, as you'll need to use terrain around you to avoid being detected by enemy control and sentry units. Do you have the courage to take on the role of these SAS operators at a pivotal stage in the war? Because who dares wins? Now, this is a mini review copy of the game, including content enough for one mission available. In this video, we'll look at the content and gameplay mechanics for what I have, and then discuss what will be available in the base game. If you enjoy the video, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button. Let's take a look. As mentioned, the content is only enough for the review mission called Hit and Run, but as you can see, there is quite a lot of stuff. We have four map tiles that are detailed with terrain, buildings, roads and patrol units, and each of these is actually double-sided. Each operator gets their own player board where starting items are placed and shows stats for weapons, special equipment and a health tracker. There are spawn tiles for access reinforcements, a starting tile for where your operators enter the map, as well as some small terrain or objective tiles that sit on the map as overlays and smaller items like fuel barrels. Your operators are represented by a number of tokens depending on whether they are hidden or spotted and each is double sided to allow you to mark if you're crouched or not. All of the Axis infantry are also double sided tokens with guards, sentries, patrolmen and officers that have an alert form on their reverse side. Corpse tokens represent Axis enemies you've taken out during a round and a deck of event cards dictate how and when sentries and patrol units move, as well as indicating if reinforcements should be placed during play. Lastly, there are various other tokens for marking particular areas of the map and D6 that are generally used in combat. Even for a review copy, the components are great. Tokens and map tiles are thick cardstock, well detailed with some nice artwork. The base game will include at least nine map tiles that are double sided, with an expansion adding even more, and these will also contain additional terrain such as rivers and bridges. Player boards are nice and big, have outlined areas to hold your ammo and items and any objectives you've collected during missions, as well as a nicely detailed area displaying your weapons and specialised equipment stats. Your operator tokens match your player board artwork, so it's easy to identify which is which in the mix of numerous Axis tokens that can also be on the board. Rather than adding additional tokens to the board for spotted operators and alert Axis, you simply flip the tokens to show a clear status icon. What I really like is that the map tiles are divided into smaller squares for movement and range, and although the squares are easy to make out, they don't obscure any of the map artwork, which is nice. For the base game, there will be a ton of additional content with more operators to include a diver and of course a sniper and vehicles for both Axis and operator transport where some will become objectives of certain missions and these include bikes and jeeps. There's going to be two separate decks of event cards differentiated by colour to be used in the missions and you'll see how these affect the game later. You'll have over 50 Axis tokens, mortars and an expansion with an agent operator Nancy and even more event cards as well as tanks, planes and new types of Axis enemies to contend with. But does this overload of content make a good game? Let's see. The base game will come with a number of missions for players to attempt, but I'm not sure if they are linked in a campaign system like Zed War 1 or Standalone. Regardless, each mission will have its own map layout, operator starting points and Axis spawn tiles. The map will show where certain enemies and objectives are placed and provide a briefing on how to complete the mission. You will then need to select your operator and load them out with their equipment and items that not only include weapons and ammo, but grappling hooks, traps, as well as time bombs. So for the SAS operator jock, they carry a pistol, grenades, grappling hook and rabbit's foot special equipment and a dagger. The pistol has unlimited ammo, but the grenade and special equipment tokens are placed here until used. Each operator also has a target marker used to mark enemies during the game and health is recorded on this track. Objects that are picked up during a mission are stored here and weapons have an area for stats to display the range for attacking and an area range for noise and any limitations on the number of uses. 
The map tiles show the starting locations of both sentry and patrol units, and these are always placed irrespective of other Axis units indicated in the mission briefing. Sentry points are marked with an eye icon where you place a sentry token of matching colour facing the shaded primary arrow. Patrol unit starting spaces can be found as arrows along these dotted patrol line areas. Each patrol line has two starting arrows where you can select which space to place the unit at the game setup. The first thing I notice is that just for this mission there is some variability as you can randomly assign patrol units to one of two starting locations on each patrol line. This means their pattern of movement in relation to other patrols will change with different layouts which is always welcome. In this hit and run mission you are tasked with destroying three supply dumps with grenades, bombs or fuel barrels on top of assassinating a high ranking officer and then escaping on the vehicle tile where you started the game and this is no easy feat. To do this you'll need to move carefully around the board using cover to avoid the attention of Axis who become alerted by spotting you within their line of sight, hearing gunfire, the use of explosives or by taking too much time to complete the mission. If any Axis are in unfavourable positions you can of course take them out but don't leave the corpse lying around as it's a dead giveaway, pun intended. The game rounds are split into various phases depending on whether you are in stealth or a battle section phase. During a stealth section the Axis forces are mostly unaware of your presence and the alarm hasn't sounded so the enemy follows a set of automated rules for movement. But during the battle section the alarm is sounded and the enemies and reinforcements are on the hunt. Each SAS operator gets four action points they can spend on various types of actions all having a different cost. You need to use these wisely to move, attack, pick up objects and hide before the Axis take their turns. You can spend action points to move about the board and hide behind buildings and in forest spaces. You'll need to use other terrain spaces to your advantage such as bolting through windows and over low walls and hedges using these for cover and to stay out of line of sight. Enemies have a line of sight of 8 spaces and their facing is important as they can see everything within 45 degrees of this range. Therefore, you'll need to crouch to ensure you're not seen when behind walls, windows and hedges. You can also sprint to move a greater distance, but can't do this through a forest space or directly behind an enemy or you'll alert them. Now, your movement and position at all times is critical, as at any time you are within line of sight and not crouched behind cover, you're spotted. Movement and sprinting cost action points, and so does crouching, but you can't sprint when crouched or into a forest space. With only four action points available, you really need to plan this carefully to ensure you end up in a tactically sound position as well as having the ability to progress further on the next turn. Being spotted moves your stealth token towards the alarm and the Axis will also call out to nearby enemies who become alert as well. Not only that, if you are spotted and carry out any action that doesn't result in you defeating an alert enemy, then they take pop shots at you. You can attack any enemy using a variety of weapons such as pistols, daggers and machine guns. The best way to do this is with a fighting knife, as it's quick and silent but there are some limitations. You need to be directly behind an enemy in order to attack and you also need to get close enough without being spotted so you'll need to use any form of cover to your advantage but assassinations are automatic hits. Using a ranged weapon is a little more risky and dependent on a dice roll. If you are within short range you get a bonus modifier so in this instance a pistol normally hits on a 5 plus. But as I'm within four spaces, I get a plus one modifier, meaning I only need to roll four and above to hit the target. Whether you defeat the target or not, any axis within a specific range of the weapon's noise stat will become alert, as they will hear the gunshot and also turn to face your position, even if you're in cover. If you miss, the target will automatically become alert as well, so make sure you don't waste these shots. Some weapons allow you to roll multiple dice and assign hits to adjacent enemy units in strafe fire and grenades have an area effect so you can hit multiple enemies with one action but do have an ammo count restriction. Also the use of explosive will alert all enemies in play so must only be used when absolutely necessary even though they provide a great deal of damage. To save on action points you can combine moving and firing meaning you can pop out from behind a building and attack or fire a weapon and then disappear out of sight and this can even be done during an assassination. You also have the opportunity to take aim shots decreasing the d6 value to hit the target but these cost an extra action point. 
or you can mark an enemy target with a counter even if they are out of line of sight that makes them easier to take out later that round but this is costly using two action points. Any killed axes are replaced with corpse tokens that remain in play for the round and will alert any enemy that spot them. To prevent this, you can pick them up and carry them to forest spaces or dump them over walls and through windows to keep them out of sight, especially from patrol units, but you can usually predict their movement pattern. As for the axis, as long as you are not spotted on their turn, they'll follow a set of automated actions dictated by event cards. Event cards are split into three areas, the stealth section, battle section and a patrol area. If all is going well, during an event phase you will either rotate a white or a black sentry or patrol unit to change their field of view, add reinforcements to a spawn tile in play or move the stealth token towards the alarm. Axis unit rotation indicates if the unit rotates left or right and how many times. This movement is quite unpredictable so you need to make sure you are safely out of range or in cover to prevent your operators from being spotted or push your luck in hopes that the unit colour is either not activated or rotates in a direction to keep you hidden. As well as gunfire advancing the stealth meter, event cards can do this too so you really can't hang about before the alarm is sounded. But whilst in the stealth section of the game, any unit spawned on tiles will remain there until the stealth token reaches this point. Event cards can also give you a lucky break providing you with a cigarette token that can be placed onto enemy units. These units now have no line of sight and will not move or rotate making them easy pickings for the lack of concentration. The centre of the event card houses the patrol token that will be flipped every turn. Patrol units on the same coloured patrol lines as the token will march their route keeping a vigilant eye on their surroundings as they do and this will occur every round. I really like the event cards, although you can predict which patrols will move along their routes, you will have no idea which units will rotate, if any, and this forces you to be more cautious, which is the essence of the game, trying to progress as quickly but as quietly as possible. But you can be put into a bit of a predicament. Sit tight and wait for the patrol to pass, which could take a few turns, will likely result in the stealth marker getting closer to the alarm, or axis units turning to face you, which means you need to find another route. Move with too much haste and you could find yourself out in the open under very risky conditions, hoping the closest sentry doesn't turn to face you. Remember, alert enemies are likely to shoot you if you take any actions while spotted. The use of the mark target action during the operator turn is awesome, as it means you can tag an enemy and lie in wait. The mark target doesn't have to be within line of sight, just in the wrong place at the wrong time. If marked, your operator can attack that unit at any point in the round as long as you have line of sight. So, you can use your knowledge of the patrol token to tag an unsuspecting unit and shoot them when they come into view from their patrol movement action, even though the operator phase is already completed. It's like a free action. Or, if worried about a sentry turning to face you, mark them first and shoot only if they rotate. It gives you that extra confidence if you feel a bit boxed in. You do have to be careful when firing weapons as they alert nearby enemies and this will change their behaviour and this depends on whether you are spotted or not. If during the axis activation phase you're still hidden away, the alert unit remains facing you so you can't hope they just wander off on patrol. If you're spotted, only those that are alert will seek you out whilst others will carry about their business as discussed. But if you're unlucky enough to have set off the alarm, then all Axis units are alert and this includes those on spawn sites and are all pretty mad and are looking forward to hunting you down. They all move and try and get an optimal attack position which is within line of sight at short range and only attack later in the round. There are different types of Axis units to include riflemen, SMG infantry and officers where defence against enemy attacks is quite simple. Each unit requires you to roll a number of dice and equal or beat their defence value. Axis units still get short range bonus meaning you have to roll higher but you do get cover bonuses if crouched behind walls, windows and hedges and in forest spaces and these give you modifiers depending on the type of cover. Each operator only gets 5 health points so you can't afford to take too many hits, although you can heal some wounds but this takes your full action point allowance that turn. When the alarm is sounded you now use the other section of the event cards during the event phase. These will add either extra axis units to the map on spawn points or give you a bit of a breather where there is no effect. 
Even for a small review mission, the game appears to be a master of thoughtful and meticulous gameplay. Planning ahead is vital, you can't go in blind. Therefore, you need to have backup plans because simple effects like the wrong unit turning and a missed shot, especially at close range, can begin a slow uphill struggle to completing the mission. Now, I've not even covered all the actions available to the operators. One can lay traps, that kills units who trip it. You have the use of a grappling hook to scale high walls, and you can pick up, move, and place fuel barrels to create devastating attacks, albeit at a cost. Grenades can be thrown blindly over terrain and buildings, but are less accurate and likely to scatter from the target square. One of my favorite mechanics in the game is the use of the time bomb, where you put a token onto the map tile to indicate its placement, and then put a time bomb card into the event deck. You'll know how many turns you have until it detonates, so you can draw enemies to its location, or use it to destroy mission objectives and be halfway across the map and sit back and watch your handiwork from a distance. I even thought of a cool house rule for a faulty bomb where its card is randomly shuffled into the deck so nobody knows when the time is up. I've really enjoyed playing this mission and it always seems to get hairy the closer you get to the objective. I think the automated activation of Axis is very well done and it keeps you on your toes the entire time. You really should be looking at assassinations wherever possible, but sometimes you have no choice but to use a firearm, and this can have consequences. Also, leaving sentries and patrol units can backfire because when the alarm is triggered, you may become surrounded, so you have to balance this over taking detours to take them out. Hiding corpses cost action points, but you'll need to do this at some point, and as mentioned, marking targets is very helpful to attack a unit that was out of sight at the time. The rules were pretty easy to grasp, but you have to understand there are a lot of exceptions. Examples include future actions of Axis units if alert, depending on whether your operator is spotted or not, or if the alarm is sounded. All units except sentries will move, they rotate instead. If spotted by non-alert enemies, they shout to neighboring units, but if the unit is killed, other units in line of sight will become alert. Also, non-alert units block line of sight, but alert units do not. In the scheme of things, it all makes sense, but you may find yourself flicking through the rulebook for reminders, and I hope there's a reference guide for these occurrences. For those looking for a game of covert operations, hidden movement, and tactical decisions, then I have no doubt that SAS Rogue Regiment will be an instaback. The base game looks to come with a great deal of content that will ultimately allow every mission to require a different strategy and approach, as well as introducing a multitude of dangers and obstructions your operators must overcome. The missions from Rob Butler's previous game, Z War 1, were all very thought out and immersive, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can produce here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. This is Ninja Geek Games. Cheers.